Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jabwell. If this is your first time here, today we are in uh, Baha'i Temple, also known as Baha'i House of Worship. It's uh, one of the seven continental Baha'i Temple in the world, and in Uganda, we are blessed to have one. So today I'm going to give you a tour. Unfortunately, I may not take uh, pictures or videos inside, but um, this Baha'i Temple we are going to see now, it has a dome and nine entrance, symbolizing the nine major religions of the world. So their main purpose is simply to unite religions in the world <clears throat> i'm going to show you let's reach there and find out more about it so this is baha'i gardens so this is one of the tourist destinations in uganda Some few parts are still under renovation. Yes, yes. So that building over there is the temple. It's called Baha'i Temple or Baha'i House of Worship. So you can see its garden is well kept. You can see how clean it looks. And that also is part of the garden. So guys, if you want to visit this temple, I'm going to leave a link on the on the description. I can personally guide you. You can book uh, you can book a tour. We have so many other activities within the website where you can book your tour and then we can guide you to learn more about Kampala city and Uganda at large. So this is the temple, Baha'i temple. This is pure unedited, uncut tour of the temple. So these are some of our tourists. So different people come here to pray, meditate, and do all sorts of uh, religious practices. Remember, this place is open to everyone, irrespective of your faith, race, or religion. Then, after a couple of months, 100 million pounds. So, these are still the garden. guys through like the faith and we can also like explain to you like any questions that you guys have and then uh, you guys can also have a chance to go inside and uh, yeah. 
don't know if you guys are up for it. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is basically the Baha'i Temple. Um, Baha'i is an independent religion, so it's not part of any denomination. Thank you, Yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? It's an independent religion. Yeah, exactly. So it's not part of any denomination, for instance, like in Christianity or in Islam or Judaism, but it's its own independent religion. So for us, what we believe is that there is one God, and his plan was kind of like um, to send multiple like um, teachers, divine teachers, who are helping us to find to God. Because we believe that this uh, we have a spiritual nature and a material nature, and the fact that we live in this material world, there are a lot of um, things that you know like can take us away from the path of God. You know, because we we feel our ego, we feel our needs, our temptations, our desires, and such things. To believe that uh, in order to generate love and in order to be loving and in order to be virtuous, um, we need to seek our advice from, from those prophets. So what we believe is that like there was kind of like a, a divine plan and that divine plan also included prophets of the past. So kind of you can imagine like when you have uh, a school, like when you attend school and uh, you go through like one particular curriculum, you have primary, secondary and so on. Um, the primary teachers are going to teach you different things as for instance the, the teachers later on but it doesn't change the validity of what they are saying and uh, it also it helps them to progress because the, the one information is dependent on the previous so when for instance like uh, someone and yeah and it depends on the maturity to believe that in the past also like the age people's society has not been as mature they didn't have, have as, as much like resources, access, accessibility to various different things. So therefore also the understanding was limited. Mm -hmm. So now our understanding is a little bit more advanced. So therefore also we have different needs in our society and therefore also we need a prophet or a divine teacher for our age. So therefore the founders of this religion, there are two, they're called the Bab and the Hawla. And the Bab is kind of like the forerunner um, who, who anticipated or who prepared uh, everyone for the coming of Bahá'u'lláh. And Baha'u'llah is the one whom we believe brought the new age. Um, yeah, and one of the most important uh, things that we believe in is also unity of religion, unity of mankind. Um, yeah, and that like our purpose as human beings is um, to strive to contribute to an ever advancing society. And yeah, to, to be in harmony and to be in peace. And, and now we have questions, we have finished. I'm sorry, I just forgot to okay. mention that it's like from Persia, it originated from Persia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you have like a Bible, do you have like a okay. holy book? Yeah, we do have. So basically uh, we have the, we call it the Kitabi Akdas. Uh, it translates into the most holy book. And for the Baha'is it's the book of laws. So that's where we read like what is commendable, what's not commendable for Baha'i to do. And we get some guidance of like how to behave. But then also the thing is, we also read other writings. So for instance, we're also encouraged to read the Bible, we're encouraged to read the Quran. And also because the faith is very young, there are many messages, treatises, and letters preserved from, from the time of the Prophet. So those ones also we read. And there are also certain like prayers and things. That, so we can read from all of those things. Does it have similar origin stories like the Bible and the Quran? How or it just straight into the religious ones? Yeah, so um, there is a connection. So there are some things uh, where they make reference to the Bible and the Quran. But then there's another book which is called the Kitab i Khan, which is the book of certitude, uh, where it basically it goes into like the views of the faith uh, towards other religions and like how all the religions they connect. You know? So that's a separate book that we have. And then another thing, you mentioned something about the coming of the preparation for the coming of the Bahola. Who is Bahola? And is that English word or actually what is Bahola? Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm also a guide. Yeah. I, I would like to try like to help you. Like he said, the four, like the, the two people who brought the faith was the Bab and Bahola. Yeah. But the Bab, much as was also a manifestation, he was the forerunner, mm -hmm. as in he was the first to proclaim. At the same time, he was preparing the people for the coming of Baha'u'llah. Yes. Just like the the coming of 
Jesus Christ. Mm. The first to prepare the people was then the Baptist. Mm. So the Bab had the same mission. The Bab, his name means the gates. And what do gates do? They open or lead people to a certain destination. So that's what the Bab, that, I mean, that's what the Bab's mission was to prepare the people for the coming of Bahala because the Bab's dispensation didn't last long. Oh. Yeah, so after, before his passing, he act like he told people to turn to Bahala after his own. Oh. And indeed, after his passing, after he was murdered actually, <coughs> Bahala took over. And Bahala means the glory of God. Okay, so when was it? Uh founded not in uganda just like founded Major. it started in 1844 1844 yes. okay. um so the history is basically that uh he himself like in 1844 he declared to be a prophet or a manifestation of god and at that time like the context was mostly like uh, muslim shia muslim and he claimed to be the mihdi and the 12th imam and he also said that he's the return of jesus so that, uh, like amongst the clergy and the government, who use religion also to control people and to get funds and such things, face a lot of like um, well problems. And then uh, they started imprisoning every believer as much as they can. And then uh, also the Bab, and they banished him into multiple countries. And then after seven years from the point where he has declared himself, um, there was uh, like like in, a, in an open marketplace. There were 750 gunmen who were um, orchestrated by the government, by the Persian government, uh, to, to shoot him. Yeah. So then the, the first attempt failed um, because he said, so basically they, they shot him and then there was a big cloud and then um, they found that there's someone else who, who was also uh, martyred along with him. Uh, they found him loose from, from his chains and the bab had disappeared. So then they went everywhere looking for him and they found him in his cell and he, he was dictating something to his secretary because he wanted to finish uh, a certain correspondence or letter. And then after that he said, before I, like, you cannot take me away before I've finished to, or completed to say what I wish to say. And then when he finished with his secretary, he said, now you can take me. They took him again to the same marketplace. Um, yeah, and then they shot him, and the entire bodies, they were completely, um, yeah, penetrated by bullets, apart from the face. Yeah. So people don't get to train, do you have, because here there's only one in Africa. So, if I'm in Tanzania, and I want to train, uh, the need to not have So, um, we do have an uh, international Baha'i community, just that not every Baha'i community has a country. But we do have uh, like centers, Baha'i centers, where, where people gather and they pray. So for instance, this is not the only one in Africa, it's the first one in Africa. So we have also one in Congo and Kinshasa, and also in Matunda soil in Kenya. Yeah. So do you In Matunda soil in Kenya. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. It's a temple that is the size of our temple. It's a little bit smaller. But Mine is not about the faith. I'm more curious about this site in the temple place. We, you know, I understand people are allowed to visit this place for faith, yet it's very well kept. The question is who really, who's responsible, like who funds the maintenance of this place? Is it the government? When people come in, are they requested to fund, to support? How do you guys manage to maintain this? Um, maintenance? Uh, the funds are usually contributed by the Baha'is themselves because mm -hmm. Baha'is give to the funds. Mm -hmm. So meaning it's from Baha'is from all over the world. Mm -hmm. That's what helps to manage, like to maintain this area. And maybe also to add on, like it's a place of worship. So the most important thing is that people can access for free a place mm -hmm. for prayer. Mm -hmm. So therefore also it's like our sacrifice as a Baha'i community mm -hmm. that we give to the fans and that we make it possible. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, um, so I forget the name of the, the initial prophet prophesied the second person to come. Uh, Bye.
given yeah, given you said that was in the eighteen eighties, I'm assuming they're not alive. Yeah. But as is their bloodline still like the head of the church if it's if it's full like the descendants, are they still like known or so the thing is we have something that we call the covenant, yeah. which is basically like our our relationship to God or to the faith. And unfortunately, uh, the family uh, of the prophets, most of them were covenant breakers. So after Baha'u'llah died, um, there was his eldest son who preceded him. And uh, after that, um, his grandson. And But that one didn't have any child, so he didn't have any blood like that. So then they created um, institutions. So it's something that also in our holy book we're supposed to have, because we don't have any clerics and we don't have any spiritual leaders. But we still do have the need for, for administration, for like, for instance, funding, for instance, you know, yeah. um, activities and such things. So they don't have the ability to interpret for us, for us the writings or tell us what to believe or not, what not to believe. For that, we need to refer to the writings. Okay. Uh, but then we do have an administrative order, which uh, has its like headquarters in, in Haifa, in Israel. Uh, and it's, a, it's an assembly of uh, nine people. And we have those assemblies. Locally, nationally, internationally, yeah. and those ones are the ones who are guiding the community. Yeah. They already told me I'm not supposed to record. So these are Baha'i Gardens, it's a very big garden and they said uh, maintenance of this place is purely done by the Baha'i community themselves. It's a, it's a nice place, people come here to pray, meditate perform all religious rituals 